this kind of <laughs> was in a kerfuffle over the past week. Um, I think it was Teslarati published a story about uh, the New York City um, commission that manages the taxi medallions in New York City. Because if you don't know, they limit how many taxis are on the road to try to control traffic. Um, it actually goes all the way back to the 1930s during the Great Depression because everybody trying to earn a living, there was just a flood of taxis on the streets. It was jamming up the streets. There were more taxis than people. So they put this taxi medallion system in place to try to get that back in check and to control how many taxis can go in and out of the city because of the limited space and roadways. That's been in place for 80 or 90 years. Um, so this story broke because re- a company called Revel, which is trying to launch a EV, basically ride sharing service in New York City in like the Man- lower Manhattan area. They were trying to roll this out by using a loophole in the current restrictions for taxis. And the commission basically said, no, you can't do that thing. That's not the intention of the loophole that was in there. Uh, because the restrictions that are in place that have been over the past couple of years, they've basically frozen, basically saying no new taxis, with the exception of electric vehicle taxis or taxis that are wheelchair accessible. So Revel came in and said, hey, we're going to launch 50 EV Tesla Model Y taxis because that's the exception. And the commission basically said, no, that's not the case. The intention of this was to transition existing taxis that are gas taxis into electric, not to make it a just free for all just to go electric because you could end up adding thousands of more taxis to the roads, which they're trying to prevent. So Revel basically got called on it and the news broke. And this is where I think the story kind of (laughs) they lost the thread. And this is the world that we currently live in with social media and everything happening lickety split and nobody has the patience to look at context around the stories. It just came out that the commission told Revel they would have to basically buy 50 gasoline taxis and then convert them into the 50 electric taxis. And that's what like Tesla Roddy and others were reporting. And that's not what was actually going on here. I got contacted directly by viewers. I got some emails and direct messages on Twitter and things like that of like, can you believe this? And my first reaction was that is the worst thing I've ever heard. But there's got to be more to it. And that's what happened over the past week is what came out. It was they're not banning electric taxis. What they were saying is the loophole that Revel was trying to use, they were using it in a way that it was not intended. And that's all they were shutting down. In theory, if they had 50 gasoline taxis in operation already, they could convert those to Model Ys. But because they have no taxis in operation right now, they can't add to the existing set. So... We could get into a whole debate of whether the taxi medallion system in New York is just a crazy pants. Why are they still doing this thing? I think we might have to, man. It might, yeah. might come to it. I don't know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but when you look at what the rules are and how they're wor- being used, Revel kind of manipulated the media attention around this to get people on their side and get people riled up. And to me, that actually was more distasteful than what the commission actually did. The commission didn't do anything wrong here. They're trying to get car- taxi companies to go electric. It was Revel that was kind of playing a little bit of a media game here. And so it's, I think it did, the, the story did a basically 180 over the course of the past week for me. So it's, it's kind of interesting. What's your take on all this? So first of all, I will say this is what kind of concerns me with our current culture where the news like boil it down to 10 words for me. That, that's what I'll, all I need. And this is what people will see. And they'll think that, you know, NYC is out to get Revel and other EV makers and stuff. But Always, what I've learned as I've gotten older, all stories, there's way more to it than you probably realize. Yeah. And the, the more you dig into it, the more uh, that becomes clear. So for, for our viewers out there, if a story like this ever emerges again in the future, let us know. Like if you heard a headline that sounded like, wait a minute, how could, you know, this company uh, doesn't like puppies. Like that can't be true. Like what, what's really going on? <laughs> and if you have one of those examples, like let us know and we'll, we'll cover it because I think this is a good platform for that. We get an hour of people's time and let's dig in a little bit deeper than like the headline. Um, so next let's talk about the government. We, Matt and I probably, we agree a lot, but this is probably where we disagree more than anywhere else. Um, Rewind time to 1930 when they had this issue where there were all these people trying to be taxi car drivers. Well, the reality is it wouldn't have lasted very long because if you have 100 cab drivers and 50 passengers, 
that's not going to last very long. Eventually, these guys are going to be like, yeah, I'm out of business. I can't do this anymore. They'll sell their car. They'll move. They'll do whatever and go do something else. The natural way, like just without laws, without regulation, without government, the natural way would have eventually taken it, taken care of itself. But because we did it this way, now we have this secondary market where we talked about this Matt, before the show, where people are buying medallions for like $100,000 and paying a loan like a mortgage against it. And now they're competing with Uber and Lyft where they come in and they're just you know, hailing ride chairs everywhere and revel and this and that. It just becomes a weird thing where you don't know who to cheer for, who to feel bad for. I feel bad for this cab driver who bought a $100,000 piece of paper that says I can drive a cab in this city. It's absurd. The whole thing to me is, is, is wildly absurd. I agree that we got to solve the problems. But my personal philosophy is governments almost always do more harm eventually because of there's all these unintended consequences, even though it sounds like they want to do the right thing. But by driving like this artificial medium into what really would naturally would happen all along, I think um, things are bound to get screwed up. But I'm glad to we covered the story in more detail. I actually wasn't aware of this one until you brought it up, and I'm glad one of your viewers did. Yeah. Um, it's it's tough. There's still all kinds of goofy stuff. Like wh- if they could have medallions, if they had a gas car to convert, wh- why is that law? That law is equally stupid, right? Are you telling <laughs> Revel they need to go lease a gasoline car, register it, and then swap it out. What 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 does that accomplish? It's such a foolish thing, and far too many government laws are like this, where they just like, well, it's, what it's, does it, it accomplish? Or... But it's not exactly that. It's it's one of those they've just the past two years, I think it is. They just froze new taxis. Like there's no new taxis being added, gas or electric. Right. And once they open that back up again, Revel could come in directly with EVs. They don't have to go gas first. It's just that there's no new cars being added to the roads at the moment. And one of the reasons that they extended this moratorium was because of COVID. Right. It's had a huge impact on the whole livery industry in New York, like tons of people out of work and not working well. And they want to make sure the people that make their living through this, that have the medallions, that have the permission to do it, can come back. They want to kind of let the livery system kind of come back into order before they open back up the medallion system again to new entrants. And it was just Revel that was trying to kind of end run around that and get into to it right now because they saw the loophole of, oh, if you convert to EV, you can do that. And it was like, well, they didn't have taxis in the first place. So you, what are you converting? You're not converting anything. So right. n- no, because you're going to be adding. That's a fair point. To, to the system, which is why they did this. The whole medallion system is broken. It's, it's, it's weird. It's antiquated. The fact that only, I think it's yellow cabs operate in Manhattan. And there's like black, you know, like taxis in the whole New York City area like those are the ones that operate in like Brooklyn and Queens and they can drop you off in Manhattan but they can't pick up new people in Manhattan to take you out they just have to leave and go pick people up only yellow cabs can operate in Manhattan there's so many weird stupid bah so it's like I understand the sentiment of trying to control traffic it's if they just opened it up I don't know if you've been to New York recently but it feels like there's way too many taxis already. Like you just, the street is just lined with taxis. And it's like, it's it's a huge traffic problem. It's one of the reasons why it's so bad to drive through there. So it's like, if they opened it up, it would be like the Wild West and it could turn into a Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome kind of situation where I understand why they're trying to control it, but it seems good intentions have kind of created a really bad situation. It's like, I don't know how they get out of it. It's just a hot mess. So one thing you mentioned, and I appreciate that clarity, clarification because I think I was not thinking of it this way. You mentioned Revel really is cheating because yes. what they were saying is yes. if you already have a gas taxi medallion, you're already operating and you want to convert to electric, go for it. Go ahead, do it. Yeah. But we're not taking anyone new because these, like you mentioned, these guys are suffering and now the business is just opening up and picking up again. Could you imagine if you just opened the floodgates and let like a million new operators in town, those guys who've been suffering for a year with- Would never come probably, back. Like, living on assistance for new stuff, they would never come back. They would get screwed again. So that is not cool on Revel's part. And and spinning this entire narrative to make it sound like this, that really is not cool and definitely does leave a sour taste. Yeah. Um, the second part, to your point about the, the just the supply-demand problem, again, we've already done this. Like I Maybe it's the Silicon Valley arrogance in me, but I feel like <laughs> software can solve everything. I, I, do, I, do, I do have this problem, I'll admit. Um, but like Uber and Lyft do this all the time. San Diego is not New York. We don't have all this absurd anything. But if you're going to be a Lyft driver in San Diego and all these people start driving Lyft and suddenly 
that your your rate goes down because there's so much uh, supply. Maybe there's no one to pick up. You're barely doing anything, and then you quit. But there's systems that already kind of work. Or if there's 10 drivers and 1,000 people who need drivers, there's surge pricing. And we've kind of already figured out how to do this. There's already like incentive models to, to like, hey, if there's not enough drivers, you can make a ton of money and you get more drivers. But then there's too many drivers, it shifts the other way. No one's making money. Some of those drivers quit. And then you, you get, that's equilibrium, right? It's kind of like if you put a rock on a hill, yeah. uh, it might be perfectly stable, but a little breeze is going to knock it down, but it'll come into a state of a stable equilibrium. And I, I believe most models of business kind of fall into that category as well. Maybe I'm wildly off on that and I'm optimistic or idealistic, but um, it's funny. But I, I think we can agree that the way that this story was presented uh, definitely makes you uh, throw your brow a little bit. Yes. Always look for the context. That's my yes. takeaway from this. Or bookmark vice versa and let us provide it for you. <laughs> yes.